Hi, and welcome to this new PowerShell tutorial series where we're going to be using a little bit of what we've just learned with our SQL series. And we're going to be making our own SQL module. So it's basically the same series, um, but we're going to be looking at how to make our connections a little bit easier. So I'm going to be building out a module with you guys. I'll also be posting the GitHub to the module as well once the last video of the series comes out. Uh, so feel free to follow along. This way you can have the module um, before it would actually be released. It'll be really released at the same time as the last video gets released. Uh, but we will be creating it together. It will be a module where we will be able to set up a connection to a SQL database. Whether it be integrated security or SQL authentication, we will be putting both in. And we will be able to also create commands to execute select statements, delete statements, insert statements, and update statements. And then also closing the connection. This way it just saves you guys all this like extra stuff that we've done here. Um, and we're just going to have a simple commandlet to do this. So in this first video, we are going to set up the connection. Um, and also closing the connection. So we're going to be working on that. And then in the next few videos, we are going to be creating the other commands for our module. And then, like I said, I will be making that module available on my GitHub and I'll be posting a link to that on the last video. And at that time, I will also be putting the link in the description of all the videos for that series, including this one. So Without further ado, let's get started here. Um, so the first thing is a module is just a collection of different functions. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is I'm actually going to be saving it as a PowerShell module file. And then we're going to be creating a new file and importing that module directly in to make our tests. because so we just want to use it as a module. Now, I won't be creating the module manifest. Um, although that is a best practice, uh, for now, I'm not going to be creating the, the, uh, module manifest. That will be something that I will be doing in probably the last video as it's not something that you really need to do right away. Um, it'll work, uh, for now for our testing purposes, just follow along and we will be able to get it working together. So what we're first going to want to do is just save our module here as let's just go ahead and let's create a, a new folder here. So I'm just going to create a folder called YouTube here. And we are going to call it SQL. And then we are going to do SQL module. And make sure when you save a module, make sure you pick the right extension, which is PSM1, which stands for PowerShell Script Module. And we are just going to hit save. So we have our module here and we have our original file that we used to work with. And in this one, I am going to go ahead and I'm just going to write right away, put import module, and then you're going to put your path to the module. So for me, it's just C YouTube SQL SQL module dot PS one. So very simple. We shouldn't get any errors here but we also aren't importing any functions because there's nothing in here. So the first function that we're going to really want to create is our connection function. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a function and we are going to properly name it connect dash SQL server to just follow the verb noun um, setup that PowerShell uses and then open close curly brackets. And then right away, we're going to make it a commandlet by doing square brackets. And then inside of the square brackets, we're going to put commandlet binding. And then we are going to add our parameters with the keyword param, open, close parentheses. And then in here, we can start putting in our parameters. So we know in a connection, we need a server or an instance name. And then we are also going to need a database name. And then whether it is integrated security, if it's not integrated security, we also need a username or password. So what we're first going to do is take in the server or the instance name. So we're going to do that as a parameter. 
And now the user needs to put that in. So we're going to make that mandatory. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we're only taking in a string here. And I'm going to call that instance name. Now you can name this server or instance name. It's really kind of up to you. Just make sure that if you do change the wording from my uh, video right here, just make sure that anywhere that I put instance name, you put the proper variable that you're creating. And then we are going to have to put in another parameter. And this one's also going to be mandatory because they have to specify the database that we want to connect to. And that one, I'm just going to call it database name. And then we're also going to have another parameter. I'm actually just going to copy this here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make this a bool for Boolean. And we're going to set this to enter graded security. All right. And then what we're going to do is yes. So integrated security, that's perfect. And then what we need is we need two other parameters that are not going to be mandatory. So we need to do a parameter open and close parentheses, and it's going to be a string. And the first one is going to be username. And then we're going to have another parameter. Again, not mandatory because people don't need to pass in a username and password, especially if they're using the integrated security. I'm going to have a password here. All right, perfect. So that is going to be our parameters. We have instance name, database name, integrated security, username, and password. So what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to wrap everything as typical in a function. We're going to want to wrap everything in a try catch. And then in the catch statement, we will just put write dash error as dollar sign underscore as the incoming object dot exception dot message and then in our try statement here what we are going to want to do we're going to want to create our sql connection so we are going to do this line right here so we are going to do a sql connection equals new object and then that's going to be system Oops, system.data.sql client dot SQL connection. All right. And then once we have that, we are going to do a if integrated security and then a else. So if integrated security, so this is if integrated security set is set to true, what we are going to do is we're going to set our SQL connection dot connection string is going to be equal to server equals instance name, database equals database name, and then uh, integrated security. I believe that's how it's spelled out. Uh, integrated security with a space. And we are going to mark that as true. All right, so that should be good. And then else, we are going to do a SQL connection dot connection string equals server equals instance name database equals database name and then we're going to have user equals username password equals password 
All right. And then what we are going to want to do is we're going to want to return our connection object because we want the user to be able to use it. So we are going to return that connection object. So let's save this in our module here. And let's give this a try. So now let's re-import the module in this one. Now we should have a connect. Uh, there should be. Maybe we need to force it to actually update here. Yeah, there you go. So connect SQL server. So you might have to add the dash force because if the module is already imported, it'll detect that it's already imported. And without this dash force, it won't force it to reload the module, even though the module is updated. So once we have our connect SQL server, we are going to do our instance name, which for me, it is uh, localhost because I am on that same computer, or you could put the computer name um, or the computer IP. And for me, the instance name is SQL Express. Then the database name for us is going to be logging. Now, you guys are kind of confused because you guys didn't watch the um, original SQL series videos. I will be linking to those because uh, there's one video where I install SQL Express and SQL Server uh, Management Studio. And then the other video where I'm actually creating the databases and showing you guys how to connect to it. So if you guys are a little bit lost on where I'm getting this instance name and the database name, uh, which is also in here, um, I will be linking to those videos down below. Uh, so don't worry, you just look at those videos um, and I will go over how I create the database, how I create the table and everything like that. So you guys can follow along. So once we have the database name, what we're going to do is we're going to do integrated security equals to true. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to connection. So right now, if I look at my connection variable, there's nothing there. It is blank. So let's go ahead and let's run this here. And let's take a look to see what this looks like. So my connection variable, as you can see now, we can see the connection string. We can see the data source is local host backslash SQL express. The state is closed because we haven't opened the connection yet. Um, and then the workstation ID, which is hype V2016. So that is one thing that we actually forgot to do, or actually I forgot to do here. So before the return statement, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do SQL connection dot opened and then open and close parentheses. And what that's going to do is now when we go to this here and we look at our connection, we will see that it is open now. So we have our, our open connection. So now we are able to do a um, whole bunch of stuff to it. We can execute our um, queries on it. Um, but we can also just go ahead and we can close that here. Now we're going to be making a commandlet for the close. So let's go ahead and let's do that right now. So this video is really going to have all the connection parts done. And then we can start working on the actual functionality on the next video here. So let me just shrink this down. So we have our first function. So let's go ahead and let's create our second function here, which is going to be function. Um, let's go, um, close SQL server connection, and then again, open and close curly brackets. And we're going to do the command let binding open and close curly brackets and param. So this one is only going to take one parameter and that is going to be the connection or the session. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a square bracket here and we're going to do parameter. And this is going to have to be mandatory because we need a, um, a session to be able to close a session. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to call this connection. And then we are going to go ahead and do a try catch once again. And we're going to do a write error exception dot message. And then in the try statement, we are simply going to do connection dot close. All right, so we are going to save that. And we're going to import our module once again. And what we can do is right now, if we're looking at our connection, I mean, it's probably closed because we closed it last. So let's reopen it here. So we do have an open connection. So that is perfect. So now what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go ahead and go close SQL server connection. And why is this not appearing? So what happens usually in this case, it means I've made a typo. Oh, there it is. Yep. So here I spelt, I spelt it out param matter. Um, this will cause an issue. It won't make the parameters appear. So if we just update that, re-import the module, there we are. So it pops up. So we're going to make our connection, pass in our connection. And now if we look at the connection here, we do see that it is closed. So that is perfect. So there we are. So we have a connect and a close connection to our SQL server here. And what we can even do in this video here is let's go ahead and let's just test out the integrated security and let's pass in a bad username and a bad password and see what happens. So here we are. So let's go ahead and let's connect here. So here we are when we try to connect with just a test test username and password we do get our exception calling open login failed for user test so because of our write error uh, exception message we actually get the exact error message of what the problem is that's why i always like doing this write error and then passing in the incoming object and displaying that exact error message. This way we're not having to create our own custom error messages, although that might be super useful in some scenarios. In this one, I almost feel like it's not um, because there could be so many different things that might be wrong, like the instance name, the database name, the username, the password. In this case, it really, really will pinpoint what the issue actually is um, and give us that error message. So. If I actually fix our username here to, I believe it is log ACC, uh, it is, and I believe I had put the password to test one, two, three, four. We go ahead and do that. There we are. And then we look at our connection object. We can see that the connection is open and the user is log ACC. So there you have it. Our module right now is actually working. Uh, the only parts that we have so far is the connect SQL server and closing the SQL server connection. In the next video, we are going to see how to send the select statement and get that data back. Um, and then in the next videos afterwards, we're going to do the insert update and delete statements in one video. I like separating those because one of them is really just fetching data and the other ones are actually executing um, commands on that database and changing and manipulating that database. So those are going to be the two types of commands that we will have. So be sure to like, subscribe and hit um, that notification bell down below to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.